and we had both seen the same tweet from our next guest, and also I subscribe to the paper. I encourage others to do that. Hard copy paper in my hand. And yes, that's where you can find out that, the, hey, the casinos might be in trouble of trying to get football bets in the fall. We'll kick it out on the Board of Wakanda hotline to Nick Huba from the Press of AC. He's the sports editor now, but he was on that casino beat for a long time. Nick, how you doing, buddy? What's up, guys? We're doing okay, man. And uh, this uh, gave us concern, though, because we would not be okay if we can't go to an AC casino and lay down some money on the NFL. What gives? Well, basically, they got to get their paperwork in, and as of now, we don't. We know that hard. We know that Ocean Resort Casino and Borgata both have sports books, so you can lay them down there. But at the other ones, we won't know. There's got to be testing done and all that kind of stuff. And the, the Fed, the states, got to approve these things. If they don't have them in, you know, the clock is ticking. Right. Hey, Nick. This is Ryan here. How you doing? Hey, Ryan. What's up, man? Ah, not much. So. It's obviously very early on here in the in the stages of sports gambling in in Atlantic City, but what has Atlantic City done right so far? I think having Borgata get out in front of it, and one of the reasons Borgata was able to is because their ties to MGM, the Vegas MGM Sportsbook, is is huge out there, and I think they were able to really kind of set the pace on this. I'm actually kind of disappointed in a way that like more casinos haven't gotten involved in it. You know, yeah. you know, you're looking around. You have Ocean Resort Casino. You have Borgata. You know, Caesars has been kind of quiet on what they're doing. Resorts has been quiet. You know, Hard Rock had the little issues with the Miami Dolphins situation, but they've signed on with Bet365. So we have, there's movement, but it doesn't look like there's a sense of urgency in a way. Right. So to go on the other side of it, has it failed at all? Or in specific areas, has the city fallen short? I mean, you just kind of touched on it a little bit, but any other areas that you can touch on where you're saying to yourself, they need to do better. Well, I, I think we. I think a lot of us thought like all of them would be up and running by now, and kind of like having their like we'd be able to go from property to property and place the bet. But that's obviously not the way it is right now. And I think that was probably the biggest disappointment. And you know that's something that can be fixed if you're all up and running by the NFL season. I don't think a lot of people care. Mm-hmm. What you know? Let's be honest. Like baseball is not a heavily betted sport. No. You know. The World Cup is a is a is a thing where you can tell that to Mike it. Gill's doorman. By the way, he lost uh, <laughs> lost money on the <laughs> Phillies the other night. But uh, that's a whole other story. A little too much information for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the World Cup is a special a special event where people are going to lay money down no matter what. You know, you're going to have non soccer people talking about it and betting on it, kind of like the Super Bowl in a way. So I think that's one of those things where you know. They got out in front of it, but if it's all up and running by the NFL season at every property, it's not a failure in a way. I think it's fine because that's always kind of been that like that line in the sand that everyone's kind of looking at the NFL season because that's the biggest thing. And if you're up and running by then, you'll be fine, I think. But you know, what Wayne Perry and AP wrote on the story kind of you know that's concerning in a way. You know, you don't want to miss that deadline. Hey Nick, uh, you remember a period of time where it was like vote no. To North Jersey casinos, yeah. right? Well, now I, I do I, remember. Believe me, <laughs> I just I just sat there and looked and saw like pictures. I believe in was it in today's press of Atlantic City of people being able to bounce right across from New York, like a guy drove from Brooklyn to finally go to the Meadowlands, right? Because the Meadowlands now has sports betting. It's amazing to me how the dynamic has changed. Because if sports betting is supposed to be the savior, well, who's going to come if you go from Brooklyn to East Rutherford? That's a lot closer than Brooklyn to AC. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the Meadowlands was always going to get the sports book because the harness racing stuff. And that's kind of, if you ever looked at the way it was pitched to, like sports betting, you know, it was a way to save the city and give them a never revenue stream. But also the um, the harness tracks, the ponies, they want, those track owners want it. And Monmouth Park was out in front of this big time a lot of the time. So, you know, people are able to bounce over from Brooklyn, you know, good for, good for the Meadowlands in a way. But, you know. That's concerning. I think what's going to happen actually is, and I've said this, I think, to you, Pete, a couple times when I've been on, I think you have to develop, if you're Atlantic City, like these like places where people can go and like almost like sports clubs in a way and not just a betting parlor. Because you can go to Mom's Park, you can go to the Meadowlands, and they have those sports books. But you have to give an entertainment option kind of with your sports book. And I think that's what some of these properties are trying to do. Now, you touched on Hard Rock. Uh, Mike Gill and I were over there for the grand opening. I mean, that was pretty intense and i know you guys for the press of atlantic city had staffs uh yeah um, first of all yeah. I, I enjoyed the fact that uh the little behind the scenes column and i don't know if that was um 
who wrote that, if that was Chris or Worrell or if that was Kevin Post or who, who wrote that. But, you know, you had to scramble when all of a sudden they threw the doors open a little early. I was actually on vacation during that. I was floating around the Caribbean, and I didn't even know it opened early till I got back. So, you know, it, it's – they – you know, they got their approvals and they were ready to go. And it, all it is in this business is waiting for those approvals. And I think that's one of the things kind of with sports betting moving forward. You know, they want to approve the, make sure everything works in the mobile, the, the mobile apps and all that kind of stuff before we move forward with the NFL season. And, you know, that's, that's the biggest concern of everyone. Could you imagine missing NFL season? That, that to me, betting? that to me would be like catastrophic, you know? Yeah, well, look around. The numbers will bear that out, you know. You, you have to be able to open for, for the NFL. That's the engine that drives this whole thing. And without that engine, you know, it's just another kind of small revenue stream. Now, Wayne Perry wrote, uh, Wayne from the Associated Press that was uh, on your uh, Press of Atlantic City tied in today, uh, that, the, what, that David Reebok uh, notified them of the timetable July 9th. Is that enough time to give them, or is that them... Is that do I interpret that sentence to be that they first told them July 9th or July 9th was when they said, "Hey, where are you? You know, come on." I, I think they I think they notified them on July 9th. You know, I, I let's be honest with something. The DGE is real does their job and they do it well, and they're not going to stand in the way and be blamed for something not working. Right. Like they're going to try to get everything done, and I think that's kind of where, you know, the, if you let's be honest, they they turned over Hard Rock's casino license application really quick, and it's the Ocean Resort Casino got, they both got their licenses. So if they can get it done, they're going to get it done. But now the issue is that the casinos have it ready to go. And I think that's kind of the bigger issue. You look around, like, are you surprised that there's only two that offer sports betting right now? Yes. Yes. And I thought more would jump in. I mean, I understand the Hard Rock issues and all that, the legalities that go into that, but I thought there may be some other pro So actually, I'll then flip that and say to you, so if I said uh, put on your crystal ball or put on your Karnak the Magnificent hat, then you tell me which casino, which property will have it next if you are a betting man. <laughs> see what oh, I did there? Nice. I, I did see. Nice. Um, I don't know. I, it could either be resorts or, um, I don't know, maybe Hard Rock. You know, I think that's one of those things, too, like – um, What's the hurdle for Hard Rock again? Maybe tell our listeners, just remind them. Okay, that. so we don't know if this is the hurdle, but there's, there's stuff in their naming rights deal with the Dolphins that we think that people have reported on, basically, that said, like, you know, there's a concern with, like, the NFL. You know how strict the NFL is with a lot of this stuff right. about naming rights and sports betting and stuff like that. But, you know, they, they've come out and said, Jim Allen said on numerous occasions, that they will be able to offer it. We haven't had any more details on that, on what it is, or when it's opening, or any of that kind of stuff. So, you wrote it, or there, not you, but the Press of Atlantic City had an article though about what the numbers were. Do you remember what those were about how it's done so far since the like when and if it's exceeded expectations or if it was a little higher than people? I mean, were you surprised at the number and 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 what? No, I thought the number. Don't forget, you're only dealing with like four properties. So like you know, and it's only two weeks, and they took in sixteen. They took in sixteen point four million between the two casinos in Monmouth Park at the time in two weeks. That's not terrible. But as I've always said, I think I've told you this a couple times when I've been on. People who think it's going to be like this, like savior, it isn't. It's going to be another revenue stream that these casinos can pull off of, like inter like um, internet gambling is. You know, it's never going to replace brick and mortar. It's just another revenue stream for them. So Nick, you actually segued right into what I was going to ask you, which is every time AC adds something in the way of gaming revenue, such as poker, online gambling, like you mm -hmm. mentioned, casinos seem to come out and say that, listen, this additional revenue will trickle down into the community and and thus improve surrounding the surrounding area's economy. So is sports gambling going to be different than everything else Atlantic City added, or is this just going to be another thing that AC has when you come here? It's another thing that they have when you come here. Right. Like, because the taxes go right to the state, and there's not a lot of trickle down into the communities. And that's always been the issue with a lot of this stuff. Like, you go back 40 years ago, the tax rates and things like that, they'd go right there. But then it never translated into local revenue. And, you know, mm -hmm. let's be honest, they're still kind of taxed the same way they've always been taxed. So I think that's always the And that's always been the biggest argument about sports bet, about any kind of gambling in the city or anything. Like, what, is, what has Atlantic City gotten out of this? And this is the same question. 
Nick, uh, just out of curiosity, Nicholas Huba with us from the Press of Atlantic City. Have you been to both rooms yet, and what were your impressions of them? I haven't gone either, actually. I, I, I was on vacation, and then I got back. I did go through Hard Rock, which was really cool. They did a nice job over there, and I haven't been e to either sports book yet. I know I'm neglecting my duties. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, you're, you actually have a sports page to run as well on a daily basis. Uh, anything uh, breaking that we are uh, going to see? Like, uh, they used to have that segment, uh, In Tomorrow's Press of Atlantic City, or, you know, uh, uh, Get Your Headlines got, Today. <laughs> we got Mike McGarry doing a kind of a – Billy's review from the first half, um, kind of key points on that. We've got a preview of the Red Bull surf and rescue thing coming tomorrow to Atlantic City, um, the big race tomorrow night. we got Mike Shepard on fishing as usual, and um, I think that's it. I'll tell you what, Nick, uh, I sat there and looked at some uh, headlines. I got texted a picture from Ryan from when the Phillies won the 08 World Series. And, of course, yep. he had the sports page for the press of Atlantic City. And I zoomed in, and I thought, yep, there's McGarry's game story. Yep, mm -hmm. there's Weinberg's column. Mm -hmm. Okay, same two guys, like 10 years <laughs> yep. later, still cranking yep. out good work. Still, still here. Um, now for you guys, is Machado going to be a Philly? Uh, it's, They're we'll, we'll supposed see. to be the favorites, but, you yeah. know, of course we believe everything we read on the Internet, right, Nick? <laughs> uh, everyone does, evidently. I mean, come on. Looks good, but we'll see. <laughs> I think that they have a. I think that they have that connection, and I think that John Middleton Nick has the he, the desire to make a big splash. So if there's anything that I think tilts it in the Phillies' favor, you've got McPhail, you've got all the former Orioles people that are now mm -hmm. on the Phillies staff. That's number one. They got a ton of money. Number two, uh, himself Machado just saw the team a couple different times. He saw him in Philly and saw him in Baltimore, and knows that he could be. An important beast, and then ultimately you've got the owner that's got to sign off on the thing, and that would be John Middleton. Who's I mean, there's been reports today that they want to go for Machado and like a Jay Happ or somebody like that, or a Bryce Harper. Like go out and get yeah, big yeah, names. Yeah. So hey, there's they're star hunting, Nick. <laughs> Scared money don't make money, Nick. They got to exactly. go for it. As a, as a national <laughs> fan, you can have Bryce Harper at this point. I'm kind of done with them. Oh man, are you gonna watch the home run? Are you gonna watch the home run derby? Yeah, I guess. It, it, as long as it doesn't go on for five hours like it traditionally has. But, um, yeah, I'll probably watch it. You seem excited. It's, kinda gotten, <laughs> it's gotten stale in a way. Yeah, it has. It has. We you, talked you about know, it earlier. You had, you, had jo you had Josh Hamilton's epic story kind of in the Bronx, which was an amazing story, him coming back from addiction and all that stuff. And then it kind of has gotten like, okay, they're hitting 9,000-foot home runs. I see this in a regular season game all the time. I, I think the, the way baseball has shifted to this home run culture – has actually hurt the home run derby, if that makes any sense. No, it makes a lot of sense to me, and it's definitely switched to a home run or a strikeout culture. Before we let you go, we put a poll up to start the show that we're at the All-Star break. Phillies are 53-42, and 42, first place in the NL East, a half a game up on the Braves. Will they win the division, first place, first wild card, second wild card, or miss the playoffs? What's your vote? I think they'll get – I think they're going to miss the playoffs. <laughs> now that's what I said right before the season started, and I've slid up to second wild card. Here's here's why I think their run differential is not good. Like it's like plus eleven or twelve, and that's a five hundred team. And I think they've gotten through it a lot. Not smoke and mirrors, but they've gritted through games and things like that. I just don't know if they keep up that pace. They have won a lot of one run games. I agree with you that they've been terrible against the division. But you know what would improve their run differential? Ma Manny Machado. Manny Machado. <laughs> I also think the Nationals have, as a Nationals fan, have one little run left in them, and they're not out of it. And if they get it all clicking, maybe maybe they can get back in it, and that becomes an issue. That becomes an issue for the Phillies. There you go. Look out for the Nationals. Don't sleep on the Nats, says Nick Huba from the Press of AC. Nick, thanks for joining us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline for a few minutes. Press of Atlantic City dot com. Right, that's the website, pressofatlanticcity.com. Yeah. Follow Nick on Twitter as well. He's a great follow, and uh, yeah. we're going to keep going to you, Nick, when we have sports uh, betting issues because uh, we like having you on. Okay, buddy? All right, man. I'll talk to you later, guys. Thank Sounds you. good. Thank Thanks, you, Nick. Nick.